Okay, you have a telescope, you can look at things through the eyepiece, you want to take pictures of what you see. Here's how you can do that. So there's a cheap way, which is an eyepiece cell phone adapter. Basically this guy clamps onto your eyepiece, and then it clamps onto your cell phone, and then you have to wiggle things around until the camera of your eyepiece is looking directly down the camera of the cell phone is looking directly down the eyepiece. So it's not easy to do. The way I recommend it is do it inside during the day. Um, hold this thing up, wiggle your phone around, adjust it, tighten it until you can see the exact center, and then stick it in this guy. Um, you can buy these pretty cheaply. You know, I've seen them $8 for the plastic ones. This guy's a metal one. It's branded. Cost maybe $25. Um, even so, it doesn't have a Z-axis. So if you're really going to go this route, Look for one that has a z-axis because this distance of your phone to the eyepiece can be important. Um, so you can make these work. It's especially helpful if you have a Bluetooth camera shutter. So you know another eight or ten bucks. That way you're not jiggling the phone and the telescope every time you hit the shutter button. You can set it up, get it where you want it, and then push the shutter remotely. So I've done that. Haven't been super happy with the results. You can do okay things with the moon and stuff. Smaller targets, it gets tricky. Now, next level up is having a camera that you attach to this guy, and it has to be a detachable lens camera, so you're already looking at, you know, kind of an expensive camera there. And you need a couple of adapters. So here is essentially what you're going to need. On the camera side, it's going to be very specific. I have an E-mount Sony camera lens, so you need the adapter that is Sony E-mount. So one side will be the Sony E-mount. It will look like a Sony E-mount lens, and it will attach exactly like a Sony E-mount lens, and just click in place. Then you need to attach it to your telescope, usually with a T2 thread. And so in this particular situation, I'm a little bit lucky because my Celestron telescope, it's a 4-inch refractor, it has a 2-inch tube for 2-inch eyepieces and accessories, and it has a down converter that goes to the more standard, typical 1.25 inch. So I have a star diagonal and a 1.25 inch um, eyepiece here. So my down converter comes with T2 screw heads. So if you have something that plugs into your telescope, it has little tiny threads on them, they measure about 41.75, 42 millimeters in diameter. Um, that's probably a T2 connection. And so this can actually just screw right into that adapter. Um, so my adapter cost me $25. This part came with the telescope, so that was nice. The only problem is, when you put it in here, the imaging sensor is too close and you can't actually focus with it. Um, you, maybe you'll get lucky depending on your camera and your adapter and what you have from the telescope manufacturer. Maybe you won't need an extension, but I need an extension. So to find out how much of an extension you need, you just have to hold the camera, and I do this in the daytime, um, hold the camera behind the telescope, move it in and out until you get a focused picture on the camera display. Um, it doesn't have to be super well aligned, you're just looking, checking for focus. When you figure out, oh, that's the distance I need, measure it, and that's what you need to buy. Um, so this is a T2 tube extender. You can buy them in kits that have different sizes, so you can add and subtract them together. Um, do remember you have some focusing you know, with your focuser here, so it doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to get you in the right neighborhood. So for me, I needed a 42 millimeter distance. I have a 45 ring, so that's what I got. And I just screw that into the optical path here. And so now I have a distance that's appropriate for my particular camera and this telescope. Now, the only downside of having this be 42 inches farther along is your camera is heavier than your typical eyepiece, unless you have a really fancy star you know, diagonal and eyepiece. Um, and so when you put this into your telescope, it's going to put extra weight on your mount. Um, and that's up to you to determine, you know, can your mount handle that extra weight or not. Um, and also the balance point of your telescope. So on my telescope, I had this Vixen dovetail that used to be mounted up here and it worked fine, it kind of balanced in this area, but when I have the camera on it, it actually needed to be moved over and I balance it 
in that area there. So depending on how fancy your telescope is, it might have a large amount of adjustability here, so you won't need to move anything. Um, this particular telescope, I had to drill and tap a hole, move this over. I have an empty hole filled here. That's topic for a different video. So with this setup, now I can just do a little bit of focusing, get this guy in focus, and I can take pictures directly what I see with the telescope. However, the different sizes of your eyepiece, you know, I have you know, a 10 millimeter eyepiece, you can do a 20 millimeter or a 6 millimeter. Um, they tell you kind of your zoom level. And you're going to get one fixed zoom level with your camera and the telescope. And if that's not the right level for what you're trying to photograph, you might need some extra things in here, Barlow's and so forth, to get more or less zoom. So there's extra things you can put in here. But this is the bare minimum you know, you need a T2 adapter to your camera and maybe an extension to get the focus right. My telescope, I was lucky enough, it come with, came with T2 threads at the end of this guy. Um, if yours doesn't, you can buy 2 inch or 1.25 inch um, basically tubes with the T2 threads and those tubes would go in just like an eyepiece. So it's also possible if you have a star diagonal to put this camera above it, in which case the extra distance inside this diagonal would um, maybe mean you don't need this extension tube because you have that extra distance in that diagonal. Um, it also brings the weight a little farther forward to your telescope, so it may or may not put the camera in a better position for you to work with the camera, um, so that's for up to you. But I have a pretty cheap plastic 1.25 star diagonal, so I prefer to keep the 2-inch optical path all the way through here, but I could do a 2-inch star diagonal with T2 threads, screw the camera onto the top of that. So there's, there's different options, but you know, kind of your bare minimum here is get T2 threads on the end of your telescope, either from the manufacturer or by buying a tube that goes into an IP slot, um, and then have a T2 adapter to your specific camera, and off you go.